Well, Nick, uh, Consul General, ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, for coming along this morning. Thank you again for asking me to speak uh, to the British Chambers of Commerce with a even uh, more spectacular backdrop than the one you arranged at the Jockey Club a, a few years ago. Thanks to the work of the British Chambers and its members and many of the businesses here in this room today, the Hong Kong and UK communities are now doing more business together than ever before. Now, of course, Hong Kong and Britain have always had a special bilateral relationship. That's about much more than our historic and legal ties. It's about our shared values. It's about the influence that your culture has had on British life and that our culture has had here. You are the UK's second largest market for goods in the entire Asia Pacific region. You are the source of just under 30% of the profits of two of the UK's largest banks, HSBC and Standard Chartered. More investment comes to the UK from Hong Kong than from the USA, Canada, and Singapore combined. And this relationship brings jobs and prosperity for both our economies. It's only been three months since I was last here in Hong Kong. But even in those three months, I detect growing optimism about the economy here and across Asia. And every time I come here, and I'm sure this is true of many frequent visitors to Hong Kong, I sense the energy and the ambition, and the energy and ambition of a continent assuming its place at the heart of the global economy. And of course, Hong Kong is also hugely important to us as the prime gateway to and from one of the biggest parts of that global economy, mainland China. Almost a tenth of all of our exports into China flow via Hong Kong, and that is a huge proportion. And almost two-thirds of all Chinese outward investment comes through here in one form or another. And London's position as the western center of RMB trading has been greatly strengthened as a result of this collaboration with Hong Kong. Now, almost two-thirds of all RMB payments outside of China and Hong Kong take place in London. Now, London firms are able to invest directly in Chinese stocks and shares in RMB, something that's just not currently possible anywhere else in the West, thanks to our agreement with the Chinese government last year. Now, Chinese banks are going to be able to apply to set up wholesale branches in the UK for the first time. And we're now the first country in the G7 to agree an RMB swap line with the People's Bank of China, giving London investors the confidence to expand their RMB activities. Ultimately, what we all want to see is the RMB being used more and more as a currency of choice in the world. Recognizing London's role as the western center of offshore RMB trading, I'm also announcing today that we'll be hosting the first international RMB conference in London this summer. And it's going to be sponsored by an array of British, Chinese, and international banks, from HSBC to ICBC, from Standard Chartered, RBS, and Barclays, to the China Construction Bank, from Citi and JP Morgan to the Agricultural Bank of China and Bank of Communications and others. For some see the rise of China, the success of Hong Kong, the growth of Asia as a threat to the West. They call it a race to the bottom. And they want Western countries like mine to pull up the drawbridge and close the shutters. I think that would be a tragedy for us all and leave us all impoverished. This is not a race to the bottom. We should see it as a huge opportunity. Get it right, and it means jobs and investment in London and the whole of Britain. Economic success in Asia can bring economic security at home. I think it shows the strength of the chamber to put on a show like this and to attract a quality of speaker like the chancellor. I think it's a wonderful advertisement for the chamber, um, as well as a great chance for chamber members to to hear the you know hear the chancellor uh, give his views on the British economy, uh, uh, as well as other world issues.